This is a track sheet. This track sheet's got to tell you what is on each track. So I could come in and I could have on track one, I could have the kick drum, track two, the snare drum, track three, overhead left, track four, overhead right, track five, the bass, track six, guitar direct, track seven, guitar amp, track eight, um, pedal board, track nine, piano low, track ten, piano high. Now I got the rhythm section and I've taken up ten tracks. Now I could have 11 saxophone or whatever, I don't know, whatever the instrumentation is. They'll all go on their separate track, but I indicated here. You've got all your tracks filled, but let's say two tracks. And you've saved those two tracks to put the vocal on. And now in comes your friends from the New York that are the best horn section. And you say, oh man, you guys want to play on my CD I'm doing? Yeah, man, come on. Well, there's four horns. You'd like to put them on four tracks and still have tracks for your vocal. Well, your engineer, who's got a date tonight, and he wants to go home, so he really don't want to waste any more time with you. Meanwhile, you got your friends that are leaving town tomorrow. If you can pull it off, you can have the kicking ass horn players on your tracks. So the engineer says, well, you only got two tracks left, and you got to save those for the vocal. You can't do it. And you say, let me see the track sheet. So you look at the track sheet and you notice that the string section is recorded on four tracks. And then you notice that the guitar was recorded on three tracks because you had the direct guitar, the amp guitar, and the pedal board. And then you look at the engineer and you say very politely, because you suspect he's got a date and he just wants to get out of there, well, what I'd like you to do is I think I'd like you to mix the strings down on that four tracks that the strings are, to those two tracks, mix them stereo. That'll open up those four tracks. And then I want you to mix the guitar down to one of those four tracks. That'll give me two more tracks. I'll have five tracks. And then we can go on from there, right? Uh, yeah, I guess we can. Great. Let's get started. If you didn't know what you were doing, you'd lose the horn players. They'd go back to New York, and your engineer will go out with his whatever. And you think that you did the best you could do, and this, the reality is you blew it. You could have had everything, and you didn't know what you were doing. You didn't know enough about the whole thing to look at that and say, wait a minute, we can do this, we can do that. So now, supposing you say the same thing, supposing you got a new engineer, and you got all of your tapes filled, the vocals on there and everything, and your friend, the saxophone player from Chicago, shows up. He's playing the Playboy Jazz Festival. He's your good friend, and he, he comes in town, and he wants to put a solo on, and you can use his name on your CD and everything. And you go to the engineer and you say, engineer, Jeebus, you know, I, I want to put him down there for the solo. And, and the engineer looks at the thing and he says, well, you don't have any open tracks. What are we going to do? Maybe he's an inexperienced engineer. And you look at it and say, well, the vocal's on track 24, right? Yeah. Well, the solo happens when there's no vocal, right? Yeah. We're going to punch him in right after the vocal. He's recording on 24. And I'll punch him out when he's done so we don't erase the vocal when it comes in again. Because you should suspect by then he doesn't know what he's doing. But the idea is, is that if you didn't know that you could get that solo in with a good punch, you'd lose that great solo and that person's name on your CD.